So, Overwatch characters as dragons. I'm not gonna lie, I thought there was no chance that Overwatch was winning the poll when I asked subscribers what they wanted to see turned into dragons next on this channel. But hey, I am totally down to do this because I love the designs in Overwatch. There's so many cool, unique designs in the game that it's gonna be super easy to find some great visual inspiration to make some awesome dragons for this episode. So this will be a classic Pop Cross Dragons episode. I'm gonna redesign Overwatch characters into dragons and write some fun lore for them about what these different dragons are like in the wild. So if you're excited to have another regular Pop Cross Dragons episode, make sure to hit the like button, helps with algorithm stuff, and if this gets a bunch of likes, maybe I'll do another dragon episode soon. Or just a lot more monster episodes. People seem to like the monster episodes in general. Anyway, we'll see what happens, but for now, let's jump into the first Overwatch dragon with Reaper. Once more, we find ourselves traversing the globe to discover more incredible dragons. To start today, we meet one of the most violent and deadly dragons we've seen to date. The Skull-Headed Reaper is a monstrous beast that wanders the mountains and caves of the Americas constantly on the hunt for prey. Some overconfident hunters have sought to kill one of these beasts in the past, but have never succeeded. Their external skulls make any head wounds impossible, and they have thick, durable hides that can take significant damage before being cut open. Their weakest point is their wings, and often these beasts will be seen with their wings massively torn from battles with both humans and dragons. Because of this, they're rarely found to fly for long periods successfully, but even on the ground they are quite evasive creatures. From holes along their tails and arms, they can expel a thick black smoke to conceal themselves and flee in the rare cases where they find themselves overwhelmed somewhat similar to what the Germanic cave crawlers do. But some say that once fully enveloped in smoke, these dragons become completely intangible and impossible to hit. But this is likely just hunters with sore egos trying to excuse themselves for failing on the hunt. But regardless, these dragons are brutes and should be avoided by humans at all costs. Now with Reaper here, I knew I was going to have a blast using my cloudy, smoky brush that I've been using a lot lately, most specifically in my dragons videos, and I knew that I wanted to have a bunch of smoke kind of spewing out of his tail and billowing around back into the rest of the piece to help with the composition, and I didn't even bother drawing it in in the roughing stage or inking stage because I knew I could just add it in in coloring with that smoky brush going over everything else, and it did turn out just as I was hoping, so I didn't even bother detailing the tip of the tail, I just let it get obscured in the smoke near the end of the piece. One thing I also did differently in this piece is usually the background sky color, I make a contrasting color to the character, or at least to most of the character. In this one, because this is such a menacing character, especially with a name like a Reaper, I really want a aggressive dark red sky in behind the character with some dark clouds, so this whole piece pretty much ended being black and red, and that makes the character a little bit more hidden in with the rest of the piece, but I felt like that kind of worked for this drawing because I wanted the character kind of obscured in smoke for part of it, and I think his skull being a little bit brighter, more not quite white, but like a yellowish-grayish kind of color, would work to the advantage of making it stand out amongst the rest of the piece. Also, I had some mountains in the background kind of pointing us to his head. So despite doing a bunch of experimenting with this piece, I really like how it turned out, and I think it was a great dragon to start off this video. Next, we find ourselves with a much less violent dragon in the beautiful rainforests of Brazil. If you hear a thumping echo while hiking through the trees, you can bet that this is the call of the Brazilian Sky Pulse. These dragons don't breathe fire or lightning or frost like the dragons we've seen before. These creatures shoot pulsating sound waves from their mouths that can be seen as glowing green rings. They can be used to repel foes or aid in flying, but many who live in the region also claim to have seen these dragons using these beats to quicken the healing of wounds. These dragons appear with similar traits to frogs in the forests that they live in. They have smooth amphibian hides and large padded fingers and toes. 
These dragons are often considered to be a good omen when seen. They've never been found to attack humans and will sometimes protect people from forest predators. Some also consider the sound that they emit to be like a strange and energizing form of music. Youths of the region will at times dance to the sound when it comes echoing through the trees. The Brazilian Sky Pulse is truly a beautiful beast who brings joy and life to those near it. Now with Lucio, because he's got a frog logo, I'd originally considered doing something with him similar to what I did with Froppy in the first My Hero Academia Dragons episode, and making him a very frog-like dragon, but the thing is, Froppy is kind of a weirdish looking character, so that very frog-like look kind of worked, whereas Lucio looks pretty cool. He looks more intentionally made to specifically look like a cool character. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna add frog-like qualities, but I'm not gonna go full frog. So I made him this sort of froggy wyvern kind of mix that I think works really well. It's got a bit of weirdness to it, but I still think it also ends up looking really cool. I love doing the sort of pattern along his wings slash arms inspired by the tattoos that Lucio actually has. And I kind of did more stuff like that along the rest of his body and made the white sort of just triangly shape inspired by the logo on his actual chest. But another interesting part of making this piece was what I ended up doing with the sonic waves coming from his mouth. I tried drawing a version of them in, but I wasn't really loving how they looked. So what I ended up doing, which isn't in the screen recording, is I got rid of the ones that I drew, and in After Effects afterwards, I kind of added them the way I would do them if I was doing a special effect of someone shooting sound waves. And I think it ends up looking pretty cool. Some might consider it cheating because I didn't exactly draw them, but at the end of the day, why not use the tools at my disposal? I'm just trying to make something that looks cool. So I hope you like the finished version of our Brazilian Sky Pulse. Here it is. This is just a little interruption to say that most of the dragons in this episode, as well as a whole bunch of my past dragons from past episodes, are available as posters on my Teespring store. You can see some of the options in the little bar beneath all my videos, but if you click into that, you can go to the actual store and see everything. I've updated it with a whole bunch more artwork, like my Venomized Godzilla, my Spider Bat poster, my Steampunk Avengers. So make sure to go check that out if you want any of this artwork or my other artwork up on your wall or something. But anyway, let's jump back into the next drawing, shall we? Oh, and like, subscribe and ring the bell and all that kind of stuff for more stuff like this. You get the idea. Now into more art. Once more, we take ourselves to Northern Europe. Here we meet a massive dragon whose footsteps can often be heard thundering through the hills. The rampaging hammer tail is like a blend of a dragon, a rhino, a lion, and a mountain. These beasts intimidate their prey by charging along the ground towards them, and if the prey doesn't move in time, the hammer tails will often tackle them straight into a cliffside and smush them. When there's no space to build up a run, these dragons will use their tails, that they're so named for, to swing at foes and batter them into submission. As if that wasn't enough of an evolutionary advantage in battle, these dragons also have armor-like skin that's up to a foot thick and their wings, a gorgeous shade of blue, can be used to shield them from blows, as they're even tougher than their already tough hides. Luckily for humans in the surrounding areas, these dragons are noble and generally friendly unless provoked. They have often been found to even fend off other dangerous dragons for sport. They're one of the few creatures in the region who regularly manage to defeat the Crimson Crested Hydras, who we previously discussed as scourges of this same region. One final interesting fact about this species of dragon is that, unlike most we've seen, the males and females of this species look very different. The females are leaner, have golden hides, and have clubbed tails instead of hammer tails that can extend an extra length to attack foes. This had led them to be named as a whole other species until more research into these creatures was done by those in the region. Now with Reinhardt, I wanted to make sure to change things up a bunch more from some of the other dragons in this episode. Because I've done lots of dragon episodes, of course, it's easy for me to repeat myself on stuff a bunch, both poses and designs. And well, I really love how the Lucio dragon turned out and thought he was different enough, 
his head shape was the sort of go-to head shape that I use a lot of the time. So with this one, I really wanted to try and change things up a bunch. So when I remembered the lion logo on Reinhardt's arm, I was like, perfect, let's give this dragon a very lion-like head with a bit of rhino quality to it and just skin it a bit more like a dragon or a rhino or something along those lines. I don't totally love how the texturing turned out on this one. I think I could have made him a little bit more shiny and armored looking, like like more of a traditional medieval armor. But I really love how the pose turned out on this one, and I think the proportions are nice and big and bulky and really represent Reinhardt. Might be a little bit more chimera looking because of the lion-ish head shape, but overall I do like how this one turned out. And I hope you all do too. Here's the rampaging hammer tail. Finally for today, we take ourselves to the deserts of Egypt. Here we find a dragon that was long considered the physical embodiment of the great sun god Ra. The Egyptian sun dragon is a feathered, mid-sized dragon with a vibrant blue and gold body. The belief that these dragons were gods was understandable, as they were very graceful and had a humanoid form and flew in a perplexing way, unlike any dragon we've seen before. While they do have wings, the wings are barely feathered, and the ones they do have are a golden, metallic color that aren't flapped to commence flight. Instead, these creatures have multiple spots along their bodies, out of which fire can be expelled with extreme force to propel them through the air. The wings are then simply used for direction. These dragons can also use these holes to shoot fire blasts at enemies. When particularly threatened, these dragons can shoot dozens of blasts at once to ward off swarms of foes. While no longer considered deities, these dragons are still widely considered good omens by the people of Egypt, and many will stop what they're doing and watch if one of these creatures soars through the sky nearby. Now, people that know me well will probably have guessed that Faro was going to show up in this episode, even though in my first Overwatch Dungeons and Dragons episode, I kind of made her a dragon, not quite, I made her like a dragonborn or something, but I knew this would be a good excuse to do a dragon very much inspired by Egyptian mythology, because far as an Egyptian-based character, and her design already has some of that sun god raw kind of look built into it, so I knew I could lean into that and make a very different kind of dragon that almost has a little bit more of a phoenix kind of vibe, but, you know, wanted to make sure to still change things up and more and more. Besides Egyptian mythology, which I'm a huge fan of and was excited to build some of that into this, I was also taking inspiration from a real-life animal called the Bearded Vulture. They're super cool looking and I really like the shape of their heads. I kind of just happened to cross them while looking for some inspiration. And I often don't like the look of beaked dragons. But I knew I kinda had to do that for this one because Farah's got a beak, and in the end I do like how this one turned out. I guess by putting in the pyramids in the background of this one I've kind of set a date after which these dragons have to exist, but I guess they could all be from different time periods, so who knows. I might make a story around the narrator of these videos at some point, but we'll see what happens. I've got another original story that I'm working on at the moment. Anyway, to finish things off, here's our Egyptian sun dragon. And so that concludes Overwatch characters as dragons, or at least the first episode of it. Do people want more of this or other stuff as dragons? I do still plan on doing Justice League at some point, but you know, it got outvoted in favor of this. So let me know what you want in the comments below. And of course, if you're new to the channel, I've got tons of dragon stuff and a bunch of Overwatch Dungeons and Dragons episodes where I came up with stories for the characters in Overwatch if they were in a Dungeons and Dragons universe. And of course, I got tons of dragons episodes on this channel. I highly recommend going from this one to the Ben 10 Dragons episode. That's my personal favorite. But the first My Hero Academia Dragons episode is also really great. I've done Avengers, Avengers Villains, X-Men. And I did an episode last week where I made myself a dragon, turned that into a Transformer, then venomized that. It didn't have as much lore in it, but I still thought it was a fun episode. Anyway, that's all for today. I'm Christian Pearson. This has been Popcross Studios, home of the Nerdy Start videos on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.